Okay, it's gonna go to work. Okay. That is Ada. That's in the area. Hey kids, it's Selena from the city and beyond. I am here in Miami. You can see I'm in a hotel room. So today is just me because um, I'm going to talk about a topic that actually I personally feel like there's not enough information about, um, or maybe I just can't find it all, but uh, I'm like not looking at the camera, sorry. I'm the one that actually deals with um, ear pain on flights. Uh, Camaro doesn't really. I had, a, well, I had surgery on my ear, my left ear, uh, when I was like nine years old, ten years old. I talked about it in our video. Uh, I think it's our health and travel video, and um, I think I, yeah, I think I talk about it a little bit more. But basically, I had surgery on my ear when I was a kid. And I've been seeing a, a, an ENT, for ear, nose, third doctor, for those who that don't know, um, since I was a little kid because of that surgery. I don't have like tubes or anything in my ear. It's just like there's a special situation, totally inflicted by myself, by me. <laughs> kids will be kids. So the information I'm going to provide today is not in replacement of actually seeing an ENT. I have an ENT that I see annually that actually checks out my ears, you know, my hearing and everything like that. I'm not saying to go that far, but you should see your own ENT or a health, a health care provider because um, you also want to make sure that your ears aren't clogged um, from buildup and wax just from over time or like waterlogged. Um, or that you have an ear infection that you really need to, like a chronic ear infection that you need to treat. So please, if you do have an ENT, um, go see them if it's a recurring problem, or if you don't have an ENT, you should speak with the one. Um, these are just tips to kind of help you if you kind of already know like what the issue is and um, you're just looking for different avenues. Uh, maybe just run it across your healthcare provider before you do them. But ultimately, most of these are really safe um, and maybe one or two of them you should probably, it would have to be a conversation between you and a doctor. So number one, the first thing um, I thought of was Sudafed. Sudafed is really good at opening up your airways, um, not just like for your nose, um, but pretty much most of the time if you are having um, some type of pain on the plane, air isn't flowing correctly. Again, I'm not a healthcare provider or a professional, but this is kind of like what my ENT explained to me. Sudafed will help open you up so that it, like when you're descending or when you're in the air, you won't feel like your ears aren't popping or it's you know really hard to like really get the air flowing. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> but um, if anything, I will add notes here to explain more after I like, I guess look up more stuff. The second thing I would suggest is nose spray. So I have, um, like, it's basically like the prescribed version of Flonase. If, like, I just had a flight on Monday that was like at 6 p.m. So basically I should use it in the morning, you know, two, two squirts each side. Um, and then right before the flight, I should spray my nose again. Um, again, talk to your own ENT or healthcare provider, but this kind of helps because again, it opens me up a little bit so that my, I don't know, like my airways are not as like tight, I guess, <laughs> I don't know. But basically your nose, your ears, and your mouth are very much all connected. So whatever you use something like this, it really does help, um, not only your nose, but your ears. 
So this is actually a really cool tip that my ENT gave me. If I have a long haul flight, which we do next month, I'll have this with me, like not in the um, overhead bin, but right in my personal bag if I have it under the seat because I'm gonna need it during the flight because it's a long flight. Uh, for short flights, you could probably just do it right before you go in. Next, prednisone, number three. Prednisone is definitely by prescription only. If I'm wrong, feel free to correct me. Prednisone is uh, prescription only, and I did get a prescription for my ENT, and I use it very, very sparingly, because I don't want to get dependent on having this drug help me out. I use it for really long flights, and the way that my doctor prescribed it was that I would have to use, uh, take the pill no more than 24 hours before my flight. Uh, he prescribed it uh, like a year or two ago, and I have one bottle. Um, I, I, I've only gotten two refills, because only like maybe six come in a bottle. It not He doesn't prescribe that many. I didn't really tell him I was doing a year of travel last year, but when he prescribed it, me and come out looked at each other like, yeah, this ain't gonna be enough for every flight. And then I was like, I don't wanna take this for every single flight, because you would need at least two if you're going to somewhere and then and then back but oftentimes we're going to somewhere landing going back up in the air landing again to our final destination and then the same back and i just don't want to have to take pop a pill every time and now for the star of this video <laughs> number four airplanes airplanes are pretty much like earplugs um I have like this little case. I actually need to like clean them off. So this this is what they look like. They make look make look a little dirty because of the wax I had in my ear last time I used them. I don't know, but yeah, this is what they look like. And so earplanes are like earplugs, but they're supposed to be designed for. Um, Pretty much what I do when I'm putting them in is squeeze them. I, um, ooh, don't look at me. I squeeze them and then put them in the ear. You know what I mean? And so I'm trying to look at myself to make sure I'm doing it right. And then if, I, like right now, I can hear everything pretty perfectly through this ear. I like make sure I push it in more you'll kind of know if it's got room for you. I wouldn't hurt yourself by pushing them in too much because I've totally done that because I'm like, this is not working. But just push it in until you feel like it's actually plugging the hole is in my experience what works the best. What I usually do is I'll at least have the one in my bad ear, which is the left one. I'll stuff it in there and just have this ear open. Honestly, I don't know if it's a good idea <laughs> or if it works well, if it works okay with me doing that, because I will say I feel like sometimes that's the reason why I still have ear pain when using these, is because I'm trying to delay how long I put the second one in, but there's other times where I do do that delay and I'm absolutely fine. And that might be because I did the nose spray, the Sudafed, and, or my uh, allergy med that day, and have been really keeping my ears clean or something like that. Like, there's so many things that can, I don't know, could really contribute to why sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. If I do one at a time, like one before we ascend versus doing both right away. But I do think, and this is not sponsored, I do think airplanes really help. Um, I'm pretty much, every single time I'm flying, I have these in, or at least one of them. And, and that's in the one that I know is gonna hurt if like, 
like I didn't do everything I needed to do. Number five. So number five, the next thing would be massaging between your jaw and your ear. So let me show you guys how this goes. So if you open your mouth, you'll feel like a little area right here kind of pop up. It's like your actual cheek area. I think where the muscle is. Like right about here, like behind that. And it's usually the part of your ear or like canal of your ear or whatever that is already hurting. So you'll know where you need to massage. But so where it's actually hurting and giving you that pain from your ear is usually like right here. So you need to just like hold, this is what I do. Again, talk to your ENT, but this is what I do. I like hold right about here usually and start to massage it. And it's usually hurting so bad, but I try to massage it and opening my mouth like if you don't have gum or anything, you could just go like that. And it's not gonna relieve the pain right away. I'm sorry to say that or report that, but um, it definitely helps just like all the things that aren't open, open and like is not like letting the air out, it will relieve itself a little bit. Like on this last flight on Monday, I had the airplanes in. I actually had both of them in for most of the flight and somehow I still ended up with ear pain and I was just like, <laughs> like I just, I was so like, oh, this hurts so bad. But like, because I know what to do, I kind of was like just calm and just massaging. But that is honestly one of my biggest like tips. I've not, I have not seen anyone else talk about that, but maybe they have, but it really, really helps relieve that pain. Number six, gum. So I am not a religious gum chewer on a plane. I've purposely gotten gum to have for this purpose maybe a handful of time chewing gum the whole flight if it's like especially a short flight i think is beneficial don't get me wrong um i just know that sometimes you just really don't feel like having gum while you're on plane like realistically even though it's like a sucky thing and it's just so you could get somewhere um every single time you fly uh having to have gum can get annoying if you go on a lot of flights number seven so one of the most popular suggestions on um, getting your ears to pop or just, you know, soothing that pain is yawning, which is such a weird word. I always have problems like pronouncing that, but you should yawn. Um, they said, you know, most people say frequently, like throughout the flight and that is totally cool. You can yawn throughout the flight. Um, I don't know if I would say it's like the best solution to this problem, but um, it doesn't hurt. Because technically when you're doing the massaging, I am suggesting that you yawn, but um, if you find that it's not working, gum chewing is always like a good option. But yawning, I think does kind of help when you already have the pain to kind of like relieve and pop out the ears or not pop out the ears, pop your ears. Um, it does help a little bit. And so uh, my last, my eighth suggestion for ear pain is not to sleep during the landing of your plane. So I think pretty much every time <laughs> it's a really good landing if I didn't realize that we were landing AKA my ears aren't hurting. So honestly, if you, you have no ear pain and you're feeling fine, then like you're gonna sleep through it. Um, but a lot of people do suggest that you stay awake for that time. So either set an alarm 
to go off when you're like, you know, like a few minutes before your landing time. And you know, just whether it's put the other uh, earplane or earplug in your ear, and that's why you're waking up is to make sure you have it in for the dissension or um, to make sure that you put your gum in your mouth. Uh, I just hit myself a little. Definitely wake up, get yourself situated so that before your plane descends, you are kind of like alert and prepared for what may or may not come. But also it's good to like be ready for your landing and not like surprise you're landed at Heathrow. I hope that this was really helpful. Um, I deal with this like every other flight. Um, this year we didn't go on a lot of flights so I didn't have to like worry about it as much. But again, when we did our year of part-time travel last year, it was maybe every couple of flights. So I've become a little bit of a uh, specialist in this topic. So if you have more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will definitely respond. And if I don't know the answer, I will diligently look for you because I know the struggle of trying to find this information. But again, please see an ENT if it's a chronic issue because your ENT or whoever's helping you with uh, whatever your other ear issues you have will be able to help you way more than this video. Um, these are just things to help with like suggestions maybe you can bring to your doctor and acts that they think will help. Um, and don't forget to subscribe and to ring the bell next to the subscription button. Like this video. Well, only if you liked it. And I'll see you next week. Bye.